This is a frontal chest radiograph of a skeletally mature patient. A relatively homogeneous soft tissue density is projected medially in the right mid and lower zones. It is rounded and well-defined laterally, but the medial aspect is not visualized separately from the mediastinum. It forms obtuse angles with the lung, implying a mediastinal rather than a pulmonary mass. The right hilum is clearly visualized through the mass. The right heart border at this level is not visualized, although it is evident inferior to the mass. These features suggest that the mass is localized to the anterior mediastinum. The lungs are clear and there are no abnormalities of the thoracic cage. Both breast shadows are present. Review of any available and relevant previous imaging would be useful to assess for change, but if this is the first presentation, further investigation will be necessary, probably with a CT scan in the first instance. At this location, the differential diagnosis should include pericardial cyst and cardiac aneurysm, as well as lymphoma and germ cell tumors. This is an anteroposterior radiograph of the knee of a skeletally immature patient. There are two abnormalities on this radiograph. Lesions are evident in the femur and the tibia that show very different characteristics. In the femur, there is a lesion of mixed sclerotic and loosened densities with destruction of the lateral cortex of the distal diaphysis and metaphyses and a small Cotman's triangle at the inferior margin of this area. The lesion extends proximally beyond the margin of this film but does not appear to involve the physis or cross into the epiphysis. The joint appears normal. There is the impression of a soft tissue mass but no soft tissue calcification. Appearances are consistent with an aggressive lesion. The age of the patient would be relevant. The osseous development in this film suggests an early adolescent, in which case the lesion is most in keeping with an osteosarcoma. In the lateral aspect of the proximal tibial metaphyses, there is a well-defined, lucent lesion. The margins are clearly defined but not sclerotic with a narrow zone of transition. It does not appear expansile, and there is no visible matrix calcification. Within the lesion, there is no periosteal reaction, soft tissue mass, or other aggressive feature. The most likely etiology is a fibrous cortical defect. This patient would be best managed in a specialist bone tumor center. I would urgently discuss the findings with the referring clinician and suggest appropriate referral. The patient will require further imaging, with MRI of the entire femur for local staging and assessment for skip metastases in the first instance. This imaging would also confirm that the apparently benign tibial lesion is not a metastasis. This patient is likely to need further staging of the tumor, as per local protocol, with at least a CT scan of the chest. Imaging of the other bones with bone scan or whole body MRI should also be considered, depending on local protocols. A biopsy should, only be considered in consultation with the regional specialist tumor center and is usually avoided until local staging has been completed and surgical planning has been discussed. This is a supine radiograph of an adult patient. There is an ETT tube in an apparently satisfactory position and a right-sided central venous catheter, presumably a subclavian line, which also appears appropriately sighted with the tip projected over the lower SVC. The patient is also wearing a collar for immobilization of the cervical spine. There is volume loss in the right hemithorax with a minor mediastinal shift to the right. The right heart border remains visible, but the right hemidiaphragm is obscured by a uniform soft tissue opacity with a linear superior boundary. A very dense, triangular opacity is projected over the right side of the mediastinum in the region of the right lower lobe bronchus. The right lower lobe pulmonary artery is not clearly visualized. The remainder of the right lung and the whole of the left lung are clear, but there are several right-sided rib fractures laterally. The appearance is that of right lower lobe collapse and the cervical. Immobilization and rib fractures suggest that the patient may have suffered recent trauma. The very dense opacity could represent a tooth which has been displaced and aspirated. I would discuss this case urgently with the referring clinician to confirm the history and convey these findings. Assuming that the patient has aspirated a tooth following trauma, I would consider a CT and suggest retrieval with bronchoscopy. These are dorsopalmer views of both hands. There is asymmetrical, erosive, polyarthritis involving the whole of the articular surfaces and affecting both right 
and left middle, ring and little fingers distal interphalangeal, dip, joints and also the left little finger proximal interphalangeal, pip, joint. The right little finger PIP joint appears ankylosed. The metacarpophalangeal joints and wrist joints appear normal, and the bone density is normal. I cannot see any resorption of the terminal tufts of the phalanges or any soft tissue calcification. There is marked soft tissue swelling around the right middle finger DIP joint. The patient has not removed their jewelry and it is possible that pain and swelling prevented them from doing so. I would like to correlate the findings with those of any other joints which have been imaged and the clinical history. But overall, I think the most likely diagnosis is psoriatic arthropathy, although an atypical form of another erosive arthritis could give this appearance. This is an anteroposterior erect chest radiograph of an adult female patient. There are several findings of note. Firstly, at the right base the appearance is suggestive of free subdiaphragmatic gas. There is also a rounded mass, measuring approximately 3 cm, projected over the right heart border. There has been a left mastectomy. Skin staples are projected over the left shoulder, and there has been internal fixation of the left humerus with an intramedullary nail, presumably recently. The lungs are otherwise clear. Allowing for the projection, I cannot see any. Mediastinal lymphadenopathy and no fractures or bone destruction are visible. In conclusion, I suspect that this patient has pneumopridomium and also metastatic breast carcinoma with a lung metastasis and a recent pathological fracture of her left humerus secondary to a bone metastasis. Understandably, knowledge of the clinical presentation will be relevant in this case, and it would be useful to review any available relevant previous imaging. Nevertheless, I suspect an intra-abdominal surgical emergency, and in the first instance, I would urgently discuss the case with the referring clinicians, or, if I cannot get hold of them, the on-call surgical team. Once, acute problems have been appropriately managed, the need for further investigation of the other findings will depend on the overall clinical picture, so discussion of the case between the members of the breast cancer multidisciplinary team may be appropriate.